Let's take a look at the process of graphing trigonometric functions on a TI-83 graphing calculator. Uh, working with the TI-84 would be very similar. First, let's take a look at just graphing a simple function like sine of x. If I go to the y equals menu and enter sine of x, close the parenthesis, and then often we graph things in standard position, that's zoom option 6, sets up the window in the standard negative uh, 10 to 10 for x, negative 10 to 10 for y uh, way, and, and that works okay for sine, but it, it does kind of squish the sine function you know, pretty small, and, and it, it gives us sort of maybe more than we would want to see. Uh, so there is another zoom option, zoom option, the trig zoom option is option 7, and as the name suggests, it works pretty well for trig functions. We happen to be in radian mode, so if I choose option 7 in radian mode, it's going to start at roughly negative 2 pi, and the function ends at positive 2 pi. So the x values go from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi, and the y values go from negative 4 to positive 4. And so that gives us a pretty nice looking sine curve. And what's even better, because we didn't start quite exactly at negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi, so maybe, I don't know if this is better or not, but the calculator does that, so negative 2 pi would actually be 6.28, we're a little bit you know, short of that, positive 2 pi would be 6.28, positive 6.28, and so we're a little short of that. But what's nice is that if we go to trace along the graph, we see, uh, eventually we see some kind of nice values. So, uh, the sine function, it equals one-half exactly at pi over six in terms of radians. Pi over six in terms of radians gives us a sine value of one-half. And so that's something that appears as one of the positions you know, with this trigonometric zoom setting. All right, well, let's look at a few more complicated examples, um, or slightly more complicated examples. Rather than just a basic sine function, we might want to graph sine of x plus pi over 6. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So sine of x, and then if I add inside the sine function, if I add pi over 6, remember in terms of radians, pi over 6 is the, is the same as 30 degrees. Adding that inside the sine function is going to shift the graph, and we'll see this, it shifts the graph a little bit to the left. Right, so adding pi over 6, it shifts it, pi over 6 units, to the left. And so this would be a horizontal shift to the left. Let me write that down. All right, so we have a horizontal shift, pi over 6 uh, units to the left. Well, let's take a look at a different type of graph. So going back to the y equals menu, I can hit clear to get rid of the uh, graphs that are there. And if we just take a look at the cosine function, the basic sort of cosine function, again, in the zoom trig option, uh, where the window is set to the zoom trig settings. Uh, we see essentially two cycles of the cosine graph. Cosine starts at 1, is the value when x equals 0, and then it goes down to negative 1 and back up to positive 1. And let's compare that to, what do you think negative cosine of x is going to look like? Well, that's happening outside of the function, and essentially it's going to take all the y values and shift them. When they were positive, the y values are going to become negative, and when they were negative, they're going to become positive. So, essentially, this is going to be a reflection across the x-axis. And let's take a look at what that looks like. So, if I go to the y equals menu and insert, using the insert command, I can avoid retyping that the rest of that stuff and just insert a negative sign and we can look at uh, that graph and, and so it's the same cosine function but this time at zero the graph is down at negative one so it, it flipped the graph across the x-axis when the negative sign occurs inside the cosine function it's going to be a reflection across the y-axis so we can see what that looks like. Let me get rid of that negative sign and add a negative sign inside here. Well, for cosine, 
that's the, just the same, this turns out to be the same as simply cosine of x, because cosine is even. And so the values of cosine of negative x are just exactly the same as the values of cosine of positive x. So that was kind of a trick uh, sort of picture. Let's look at one more graph, uh, the graph of cosecant of x. So cosecant is 1 over sine of x, and so to create that graph, I would want to go to 1 and then divide it by sine of x. And so to kind of sketch this out, you know, this is what it looks like, except there are these false lines. Cosecant is going to be undefined whenever sine equals 0. And so sine equals 0 at 0, so there's the axis there, but uh, sine also equals 0 at pi and at negative pi. And we get kind of false lines in our picture. I, I could change the mode to dot mode. to see that graph without the false lines. We can also take a look at it with sine in there as well. And so we can get a sense of, of what's going on. So the sine function is going to be the same as cosecant when sine equals 1, because the reciprocal of 1 is, is simply just 1. And then as the value gets closer to 0, the, as sine gets closer to zero, the cosecant value goes off towards infinity because as we get closer to zero, the reciprocal gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So, for example, when sine equals one half, cosecant is going to equal two. When sine equals one third, cosecant is going to equal three. So, let me end with a question. I encourage you to take a few minutes, try to use your graphing calculator to compare the graphs of cosine of x, y equals cosine of x and y equals sine of x plus pi over 2. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.